Oh yeah. People say they give only about homo nudus animals. Hm. Are you actually realizing? This world is one world of extremely diversity of life forms. It is also a world it is just also one world. This means that in the longer run things in India will also affect places in other places of the world. So like and um, not limited to the United States and Europe. We have to tackle this problem attack this problem in one logical, ecological, sane way. That means that we don't can place the blame on some place else and that we have together as a world come to sane ecological decisions. We can stop world hunger for example easily. The only thing that have to happen is that anybody have to go vegan. That means that then all these animals be not forced in ex to existence by means of artificial insemination, which is in effect a nice word for rape because the cows don't consent to be impregnated and then their children are being stolen. Have you ever heard the scream of a mother cow how child is stolen from her? Maybe I will show you. The river Kalar in South India is polluted over 100 kilometers, at least 100 kilometers of land because of the destructive ecological disaster of the leather industry and their byproducts of tanning pollution. Tanning is the process of turning dead skin into leather. It is a method used to um, let the leather cost a lo far longer time to depose because so if you maybe know uh, Leather is dead skin, cut from an animal's body. It is therefore not so much different than animal uh, meat. I say animal meat because animal meat is what you eat when you say you are a meat eater. Meat is any substance apart from the fluid. See also a pumpkin meat and coconut meat or fruit meat. So stop using euphemisms, people. To distract. Furthermore. The um, tanning of um, the waste of uh, tanning from uh, most leather producing industries around the world are extremely bad to the environment and also a waste. For example, that many of the, the dirty water comes in the waterways around the villagers and uh, the farms of the, where the um, tanning facilities are being placed. This is also very bad for the local people that live there, who are sometimes forced to sell their properties onto tanneries because of the pollution the tanneries cost to the ground. Without little to no compensation, of the destructive behavior of those eco-terrorist organization of the tenor industry. 
You may not know that the majority of the leather is produced in third world countries because of um, pollution regulations and the corruption of our capitalist system. Also, the majority of animals are uh, executed in other countries and then transported back to the western countries. And don't help me out of the context. I know some animals are also killed in third world countries. But keep in mind that around 80 to 84% of all the animals raised for consumption are also being raised in third world countries. Majority of all the children who die from starvation live in the same countries of the countries where the animals live. Their feed is fed to livestock, housed then again transported to the west. There is a list of different ecological extremely damaging uh, chemicals used in tannering. How are also uh, very detrimental to the health of the population, so I have explained before. That can give you rashia, skin allergy and many other problems as well. Exactly 35,000 hectares of farmland is affected by tannerings in India and their chemical waste. This makes the people sick and force them into the cities, further um, costing less food production in India, which will also be detrimental. Um, will be one day that because that the majority of the world come from just a couple of places because of the pollution of this environmental terror organizations. Hominid rights uh, violations include Article 1 Right to Equality Article 3 Right of Life, Liberty and Personal Security Rights Number Article 5 uh, freedom from torture and degrading treatments article 24 right to rest article 25 rights to adequate living standards now people i will also let you know uh, that i have nothing agreed to be one hominid rights activist. But if you want to play this game with me, and if this can bring some liberty for the animals, I'll suffer the most of all living beings on this planet by exposing the hominid rights hypocrites. I will scream about, oh, you, humans are so important when humans do not exist, because to be called human, you must uh, be humane. The words are interchangeable, etymology, if you look through the etymology of the word. So prove you are humane with mercy and compassion by choosing to adopt a vegan lifestyle, which includes also not wearing them, not exploit them for entertainment or degrading treatments. Stop being a hypocrite. It is unfair to ask for something you are not willing to give. That's injustice. Peace begins by your own choices. So stop blaming vegans for all your own insecurities, for your own inconsistencies and Start to look at yourself. 
Vegans are not a problem. Carnists, self-entitled little narcs who think their own taste pleasure or entertainment is more important than the life of billions of innocent living beings. That's the definition of cruel, a psychotic cults. Cults do not care about justice. They don't care about ecology. And you know the one that that guy that have invented the engineering line. The machinery system. He was a friend with Hitler and he have uh, create this motto on base of um, execution and gas chambers by observing animal error cult here. Please people, grow up. You are not the victims. The animals are and the people you are exploiting in other countries by stealing their food and polluting their ground for your greed. The only reason those countries allow this is because your countries don't hold them accountable for their cruelty. So, for once, stop with thinking you cannot make a difference. You can make a difference. Believe in yourself. Make be the example, be an inspiration. You not will ever know how much people you will influence if you are not trying. And there's nothing wrong with be called crazy or rare or abnormal. Most, most people we adore were called radical and villains, sometimes even. Malcolm X, Dr. Luther King, Gandhi, Cesar Chavez. They were all villainized by the our evil media in their time. And they were absolutely not loved like they are loved today. Because those people want to make social change. But society don't like to change. They want to do what they have always done. And they are stuffing. Schopenhauer remembered us in his book, The World in His Representation, that all through past stretch to ages, first, it is mocked and ridiculed. People like always to make fun of things they don't understand. Second state. Violent opposition. Anybody knows that what they are doing is wrong. But they want not to change. Because uh, anybody is a little bit classic artistic. And have that expect from not willing to change their evil behavior. Even if it is detrimental to themselves, ironically enough. In the longer run. Then, after time, it comes to stage number three. And anybody understand it? Nobody make nobody question it anymore. Because it is clear. Yes, maybe you have some bigots, some hateful drones somewhere. I don't believe it. But the majority know it. This was with slavery. Slave, anti slavery activists, abolitionists were sometimes per to, to it, were to get death threats. There are, are where uh, uh, where get um, violent threats, anti uh, slave masters and their supporters, which actually were the majority of people. Don't believe otherwise. 
if you are not active against something, you are supporting it. It's like um, Eloise will remember this. Take sides, so you say. Neutrality helps the oppressor. Not once the oppressed. Silence encourages the torment or not once I the torment it. If you want to make change in this world, you have to call out the evil. Shame them. All actions I say how come from malice? Malice intent. You'll have to shame. Maybe things that are selfish, uh, things that come from egocentrism. You can um, reason mood with anything that comes from malice intent, like rape, murder, and that sort, of, that kind of stuff. You have to shame. You have to humiliate them, break their reputation. Go. In their, in their position, put them in the position they are put their victims in. I uh, know, most pacifists like not to hear this, but it was not Gandhi in his own how bring freedom for Indians. You also have in that time the Quit Indian Movement and a lot, large percent of Indians killed British soldiers. The same was in Africa, Nelson Mandela. I also killed many Britons and Dutch and other people who were in power there to get their rights back. Even Nelson Mandela, in his early times, was um, committing guerrilla warfare. And when he came for the jury of the judges, he said, I don't deny that I have planned sabotage. It, I did it not in... Um, spirit of recklessness. I have done it in a calm and sober assumption of the uh, problem of, um, of um, apartheid. And I come to the conclusion that without violence there were no way for the black man to succeed in their struggle. That's what he said. Just like with America. It was not um, only Dr. Luther King who have brought freedom for the blacks and more equality for them. There's also people like great Malcolm X and People like, there's also the Black Panthers, Did you You also have that group, you have the, the Malcolm X and his son, groups he have inspired. What I always say, you need both forces. You don't can win a revolution with only people who wanted to be friends with the oppressors. And hope that the oppressors will change when you show them compassion. I know many pacifists don't like to hear this. But this is true. I know education works. It does not change people how are pure evil. People all are acting out of malice and those people only change when you treat them like they are the victim 
Let them feel how it feels to be treated like nothing. Like their life don't matter at all. Like there are parasites. How make a sick body die. 